Hello everyone. Today I would like to talk to you about the importance of maintenance, um, of taking care of good health of the violin and the bow. Very often students come to their lessons and they waste good five minutes of their time with the teacher because they all of a sudden realize that the violin and the bow is not ready. Um, so I give you a strong advice. Try to consider taking care of your violin and the bow right after you've finished your practicing time. So next time you're open, um, the case, it's all ready for you to go. Um, we're gonna start with the violin today. Uh, the violin, as you can see, can have quite a little bit of residue of rosin from your bow, which is um, white sticky dust that settles right here below the strings and on the strings. So it's really important to clean it regularly. If the buildup is um, too big, then the tone created by you will be very rough and scruffy. So clean it regularly. Again, even with that, here right now I have just the kitchen towel, which is clean. Anything soft, cotton, um, maybe flannel, something soft that won't damage the varnish. Um, take something like that. And after every practice, after every practice, um, just clean gently along the strings uh, the buildup of the rosin and that's it. If however it happened that the buildup is a little bit bigger you may have to use a different agent uh, together in cooperation with your cloth which is the, the rubbing alcohol. Right here I have just the cheapest one from the dollar store um, and that's gonna do the trick. So what you do, don't do it above the violin because if it drips um, the varnish will be damaged. So put just a little bit on your cloth you can also purchase, I believe in a dollar store, separate packets of um, um, tiny fabric um, um, with alcohol in it, and it's way easier. It's not too much, it's definitely not gonna drip, and it's perfect size and amount just to clean the strings between, be, between um, your lessons. So now, once it's slightly damp, you move it along every string, and you will see that the buildup comes right off. Now it's really important to do it along your fingerboard and you'll be surprised what you're gonna find there. You'll see that the towel sometimes gets not white from the rosin, but actually very, very dark brown or black. And this is, you know, sweat from your fingers, hardworking fingers from practice time. Sometimes it's dust, sometimes it's um, whatever dirt that just got settled right on your fingerboard. So do it uh, not only for sanitizing purposes, but also to create a nicer um, nicer tone on, on your violin. Now what to do with the varnish, um, the wooden part of the violin, which also gets covered with too much rosin or dirt. Sometimes if it's not too much, it's just dry cloth will do the trick. If not, you can purchase a little, um, cleaning liquid in any music store specifically designed for uh, violin, cellos, guitars, and the same thing, put a little bit, just a little bit of it on the towel and um, kind of rub it in, polishing as if you would polish anything to make it shiny. And that's it. That's really making things way better for the tone and also for your pleasure. Having something shiny is so much nicer than something that is covered in dirt. Now about the bow. Let's go and take care of it. Very often it's it's really not taken care of well. Kids come to their lessons and they're upset or surprised that their bow doesn't produce any tone. And it's your fault. It's because you didn't put the rosin on. Sometimes you even forget to tighten the bow or untighten it when you're done practicing and it is so so important um, because the hair um, on the bow and also the wooden part gets quite stressed if it's tightened all the time imagine being being all you know with your muscles tensed up all the times so you need the relaxing times and so does the bow so after every practice just you know use the tension screw and just untighten the bow a little bit um, and not too much just for the hair to kind of separate gently and that's all that's all the bow needs. Now, when the lesson's about to start, you tighten it up, 
you take the rosin which comes in different types or sorry types actually and shapes um can be round it can be uh, more rectangular and it can be green this one is dark green you can have orange yellow it doesn't matter what matters is that it creates friction friction on the bow um removing all the dirty sticky parts from the hair and helps you produce the tone Remember not to touch the hair with your fingers. Your fingers, even your, if your hands are clean and just washed, uh, you know, our skin produces type of oil and this oil also settles on the hair, um, creating spots which won't produce uh, the tone for you. So take the rosin and try to get even movements. Focus often on the tip part and the frog, the one close to the frog. They are also, uh, uh, you know, often forgotten and then just repeat this movement over and over don't put too much because then if it's too much you will be creating the cloud of dust every time you make a stroke with your bow so don't put too much but i would say before every practice just put a few strokes of it um, up and down from the frog to the tip and it's gonna create beautiful tone afterwards uh, if the bow is brand new, you will have to do it more generous, more uh, gener generously, <laughs> and you really apply um, quite a fair amount of rosin on your bow. Um, and that's all. After the practice, again, release the tension of the hair, and you're good to go. So, please take care um, of your instrument. This belongs to you for now, and. This is something that you have to take care of, be responsible and do the best, um, you know, really appreciating the time that you have with your teacher, especially if your lessons are short, um, you may be having online lessons right now, do it before the lesson so you're ready to go and you don't, don't waste any time. So hope to see you soon. Bye bye.